welcome. Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. It's me, Moshe. And I'm Natasha. And we've been getting along really well. I've been noticing that recently. I don't know what it is. Maybe it was me going away to Burning Man and breathing a little bit of um, uh, uh, lilac air into this uh, stale antechamber that is our marriage. I have a I have a confession. What? Well, I didn't want to tell you. Well, it's time to do it now. Well, did you get with someone while I was at Burning Man? No, but I did. Um, I spent a lot of money on. I don't like the where this is going. A composter. Oh. And I started composting, and it's been about two weeks, and today's the day, and it's not full now for two more months. And today's the day I finally figured out why it smells like rotting garbage all around our balcony. Is it perhaps the rotting garbage yes. in the composter? Yes, but I put so much energy into it and I watched all these videos oh, and I, I put see. it together. I see. You bought a composter for a lot of money and today's the day that you decided you don't want to compost anymore. Is that right? It's been two weeks, but it smells because the sun is out where I put it okay. and like and I got like the top of the line. They said it wouldn't smell. Let me ask you but a question. It's like holes on the side of it. And there's like, I've been putting garb like food garbage in it. So let me, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. How much was the composter? $600. Okay. I mean, that's much, much more than I would spend on a composter. But I thought you were going to say 2000 or something. So, okay. Okay. How about this? We'll move the composter further away. And if we still smell rotting garbage. We don't care about composting anymore. We'll sell it to somebody else. And we will, we will, uh, we will use capitalism to offset our carbon footprint. We'll, we'll, we'll outsource the composting to another family. And in that way, it'll be like we offsourced our own carbon footprint. Okay. And also, let me say, I, I was enjoying the experience. It was fun to do with my kid. And like, you know, we were like. I felt like we didn't have to go to the garbage can as much because we have to like I, walk to a garbage can. Don't worry, Tosh. We we can and, get this solved. But oh, but here's maybe I could put a like a like a um, umbrella over it so the sun doesn't beat down on no, it. No, the whole point is the sun, Natasha. I. So they don't. Why don't they tell you your house is going to smell like garbage? Here's the deal: when it comes to warm, rotting garbage, mm -hmm. having that in your nostrils in your living space. Take it from me. You learn to live with it. You just you just say it's okay. It's worth it. I'm just saying when it comes to the smell of hot roasting garbage, <laughs> I am a voice of experience saying you learn to live with it. I told you to shower regularly when we first got married. Oh, you know you chose not to do it. I think we can solve this problem. But I think I failed. I think I'm not caught up. I'm not cut up, cut out to be a hippie. I, I'm not willing to smell hot garbage to feed my plants compost. And just so you know, I'm not putting meat in there. I'm not putting dairy. This is just like vegetable scraps. We put vegetable scraps and then all that all the pot, all the styrofoam peanuts from the Amazon packages. And then um tin cans. And I actually put a live billy goat in there. Let me see, let me see if it would just eat, chomp it up. Wait, Natasha, speaking, I think we can solve this problem by moving it further away from our living space. Speaking of solving problems, we got to answer a question okay, quickly. Fine. We have one write in question, which is how do you stop falling for unavailable people? I'll tell you how. This one is so simple. You stop when you find out they're unavailable. You, you, the whole thing, you, you don't fall for an unavailable person. You meet an unavailable person, and then you continue to pursue that person, even though you know that they're unavailable. And then you go, why do I always fall for unavailable people? It's like when I meet someone and I am uh, and they say I'm married, that is the end of my pursuit of that person. You got to snip it. Snip, you, you, it's hard, though. And please you snip it. No, no. And you sometimes well, sometimes it's not so easy. Yes, it sometimes is. you work with them and then you have a crush on them no. and then you have to see them every day. No, no, no. no. You don't develop a crush with a person that you aren't flirting you can with. Help it if yes, you can. Your, you know, come squirt out of you. You know, when you're like walking if around. If someone makes you <laughs> come squirt out of you, that's a different <laughs> issue. 
I'm just saying every time I'm getting your I was trying to not say panties wet. Well, you know, yeah, you're right. Thank you for censoring yourself and saying cum squirt out of you instead. I'm just saying physiologically no. your face flushes no. and like your body has a reaction to something no. you're attracted to them. That's no. never happened to you. You don't get a little bit of a hard on or something. Well, the cum squirts out of my heart on and then I'm done. No, what I'm saying is the to get to the point where your panties are soggy. You have to actually pursue the fantasy. That is true. If you never flirt with a person, how do you develop a crush with them? A person comes up to you in the in the break room and is like, hi, I'm Eric. I'm married. And you're like, oh, Eric, I've got to fuck him. No, you go, Eric, what's your story? Blah, blah, blah. The minute someone tells me that they aren't available is when I change their category from person that I can pursue into person I cannot. And that is what you must do. You must pre- you must pre not fall for them. That is my prescription. All right. It's so simple. It's like, would you fall for someone that's not, how do I stop falling for alcoholics? Stop going after dirtbags. Oh, how do I stop falling for thieves? It's like you just, when you find out that they, sto that no, they shoplift, have, you stop pursuing them mentally. You know, I think sometimes it, the, it, the root, it, there's a root to it, which is that you might just be attracted to, like, you know, my friends who are like really into like hot guys you, who are on the covers of buses. What? I'm just saying it's like if you have some kind of type it's, or like, it's not, you the, know, a musician, they're married, <laughs> has a family, soccer dad. That's not a type. That's a pathology, Natasha. If you always. No, I doesn't necessarily mean in a relationship they can yes, be emotionally it doesn't, unavailable. totally but it's a pathology if you find yourself it is not a type to be like i like hot guys is not the same as to be like i only like guys that can never fulfill me emotionally that's because you're scared of being fulfilled emotionally so you go to where it's not scary you go to the safe space which is somebody that will sabotage a relationship for you and so you have to sabotage the relationship before it begins. I guess all of life is about trying to, you know, rein in these basic instincts. You have to be very strong with your mind, you know, because if you want to go there in your mind and you have a crush on them, it's, it's very hard. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying, don't go there. Uh, it's a, 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 a phrase that I've coined. Don't go there. You know, mm -hmm. I say like, don't go there. Yeah, don't, but you do have to train your mind sometimes. Yeah, you got to train your mind and treat it like hot, rotting garbage. Roasting and, garbage. And walk away. Okay. And let me just also say, I got one of those composters that spins. Yeah. That's the one it is. It's well, not you've, the worm composter. You've always been a spinner. Oh my God. Anyway, just if people are writing in, I just want to be very clear what I got. All right. If that description of the roasting, spinning, roasting garbage doesn't get the cum squirting out of you, maybe some secrets will. <laughs> hey, Natasha and Moshe. I have a secret. Um, my best friend has a big group of chickens and she loves them she like talks about them all the time everything's about her chickens and <laughs> she's given me eggs numerous times and asked me how they taste and I say they taste really good uh, but my secret is that there's something about me that I'm afraid to eat like just chickens that or not chickens but eggs that just come out of them and you don't refrigerate them and she has them in this like carton that's already been there and it has an expiration date and she keeps asking me if they taste good and I just keep saying oh my god they're the best and um it's really stupid but that's my secret thanks love you guys bye this woman's like, I can't enjoy an egg unless it's been factory farmed. <laughs> um, unless they, I get it. Unless they, they burned the. I don't the, want some warm just out of the puss, vagina. Pussy. The, Chicken pussy. Yeah, I'm good on that. What do you mean? It's the same thing. <laughs> it all comes. I hear from, her. I want it to be like in next to the ice cream we, in the in the refrigerator. We are so detached from our food chain that we don't realize that the, that the only difference between a chicken fresh out of an egg and a chicken- You mean in a, a chicken fresh out of a 
fresh chicken, an fresh, egg fre fresh out of a chicken. What did I say? A chicken fresh out of an egg? I mean, what came first? I do not know. No, the only thing that separates a ch an egg fresh out of a chicken and an egg in the supermarket is that the egg comes fresh out of the chicken, gets put into a box, gets put into a, a, a big rig, gets driven to a supermarket, and then you buy it. It's like, I like that the, better. The refrigeration doesn't even happen until <laughs> like hours in a baking truck have occurred. You know what? Make yourself an omelet. Google Chef Ludo's omelet. What does that have to do it's with fresh really eggs? It's really easy. And, and no, I'm saying she should make that omelet with her friends, eggs, it's, invite her over. This is literally like saying, I don't like a peach fresh from the tree. I like it when there's migrant labor involved and they have to transport it to Safeway. Eat the fucking egg that came out, out of the chicken. No one suffered and it's be it's a better product. All right, um, I think we helped her. One more secret. Hi, Natasha and Moshe. Uh, Moshe, sorry. Um, I have a secret. I am 31 and have pretty much, unfortunately, have had a steady job ever since I graduated from college. However, I started being a sugar baby last year um, because I like attention and expendable cash. Um, so yeah, I've been dating someone who is 70. I was hesitant at first, but turns out it has been one of the more satisfying and fun re or quote unquote relationships I've had. Uh, get conversation, wine, gifts, and occasional orgasms. Um, but yeah, I've never told anyone this. It's been kind of a uh, little secret, literally, and um, yeah, enjoy. What does she mean, little secret, literally? Does she mean he's got a small ding no. dong? I wonder what she makes. I wonder as well. Will you write us? Will you call us back? I doubt she's on salary. No, it's like a weird, you know, here, honey, get, your, get yourself, get yourself the Victor, get yourself the Victoria's Secret lingerie. Here, honey, why don't you get yourself a Bulgari uh, watch? Hey, honey, maybe I, I play a game get the sometimes. Fendi like, bag. Sometimes I play a game, like if we're at the beach and I'm walking around and I'm like, if Moshe were to die, Ooh, I like would this game. I bang that dude for like a massive yacht? Wait. Like if he like if he was like, like how- Is it ugly dudes? Yeah, it's uh -huh. like old rich dudes. Like what could I- deal with for like an extremely extravagant lifestyle after you die let me um i love this game i love that i die at the beginning of it <laughs> no that's the only reason because i would obviously never be able to find love again oh that's nice so i'm like oh then i guess the best next best thing would be a yacht yeah like you know onassa style so then i'm like hmm me, i'd probably have to go pretty old let me say this tosh yeah um you don't have to wait till i die if there's somebody out there offering you a yacht to bang them, you go right ahead. It can be, it can be your burning man. And then no, we can sail the seas. I, sometimes I see guys and I'm like, nope, nope, I wouldn't do it for him. But sometimes I think there are, um, I could totally get with the old guy. Henry Kissinger? Oh, but you know what would be a, a problem is if they had to take their teeth out. Mm, that wouldn't be good. How about Henry Kissinger? I could do that. I could do uh, Henry, Henry Kissinger. But War criminal but doesn't, um, sh has his own bathroom where he keeps his teeth. Okay. So I only see him with his teeth on. What about um, Tommy Lee Jones? Is he alive? Oh, I mean, that's no fair. Obviously a charismatic actor, 70 year old, I'd, you know, I'll bang him tomorrow. Uh, Carl Rove. No. Okay. Um, let's say, uh, uh, Dick Durbin. I don't know who that is. He's a Senator. Probably not a politician unless they were like really on the left. George Clooney. Oh. <laughs> what? Anyone would have sex with George Clooney. Anyone would be like, George Clooney can be my next husband. I'm not going to. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. If you're only looking for money and he's George Clooney, he's gone all the time. He's super hot. 
knows everybody. You think George is Clooney is super rich? Wait, you think George Clooney's hot? Oh my god! And also, you think he's rich? Uh, okay. <laughs> Doesn't he live in a Malfi or something? I mean, I'm just saying. All right, let's play another secret while I think about who Natasha would fuck for a boat. <laughs> hey, most Tosh, big fan. Um, so I have a little secret that I want to get off my chest. Um, so recently, my wife and I and we're doing much better now, by the way. Um, but recently, my wife and I have been having a little bit of a rough patch. And um, we decided to seek out uh, therapy for the first time. And I must say that it was um, part, partly inspired by you guys, how open you are talking about it and, um, and, um, and how much it's helped you. So we set up this, you know, set up some therapy sessions, and we're doing it online, right? And the, we end up with this guy right finding a therapist finding a therapist is terrible by the way um it, it, to do it in person like it, people are like booked out a month out and like we need it we need immediate help right so we're, we're online and the therapist that we find ends up being um this much older gentleman and 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 it was a little bit of a surprise to us because his picture profile he was probably like 20 years younger right and um you know, we, we, we do our therapy, and this is my first time ever doing any sort of therapy. Um, my wife has done it a couple of times, so I don't know what's normal and not normal. But there's just a couple of things as we're talking that are just odd, right? Like, at one point, he wants to take off, you know, like, take a moment, take a break so he could talk to his real estate agent because he's in the <laughs> middle of, like, a, a, a real estate deal. And, you know, he kind of goes on sidebars about his real estate portfolio. Um Another time, um, he mentioned that he has this. He, well, he mentioned that he was uh, uh, had, had, has two ex-wives, and that he's now currently dating a, a much younger woman. Um, and again, this is during a couple therapy sessions that we're having here, so it's just like real, real, real red flags that are happening. Um, however, the thing is, like throughout the sessions, he's taking my side. Like he's taking my side on everything. He's kind of giving the advice that I was hoping that he would give to my wife. Like, he's seeing things my way. Um, and we're coming out of these sessions, and, like, it, it's working, right? It's working, and it's specifically working for me. So, you know, my big secret is, is like, I think this guy's a fool. He's an idiot. Like, I'm, I'm embarrassed that he's my therapist. Um, and my wife has kind of suggested this as well. Um and I just kind of denied it and act like I'm not quite sure what she's talking about and that I'm not familiar with therapy. So this is my first experience. So I think this is right. It's normal. It's healthy. So again, we're, we're seeing this. He's just is a lot to deal with is a bit much, but it seems it's working out for me. So I'm going to stick with it. All right, guys. Love you. That is hilarious. <laughs> They got straight up catfished by their therapist. But it seems like it's working. No, it's not working. The therapy is not, he already knows this. Therapy is not just about getting your way. It's about challenging yourself also. In an ideal therapeutic situation, both people should be pissed off. Like everybody should be getting challenged. Not like the guy who's like, you know, snorting Coke off a tampon on, off of his yacht after uh, sleeping with his 25 year old sugar mama is your therapist going like, do you sound cool, bro? You want to be challenged. One thing I was thinking when he was saying it is like, therapy is the kind of thing where it's like, if you can afford it, that you should do not postpone something that could help you because you are like, it might be lame. And the other thing I was thinking is therapy has this thing where these people, it's like the, the way doctors are, police officers, although that's diminishing, uh, you know, you you assume that by virtue of having the job, they've gotten to some level of being good at the job, but that's not true. It's just people. And so sometimes therapists are just bad at their job, just like sometimes everybody has bad at their job. Okay, well, it's been really hard for you to, I have some practical advice. Um, it was really hard for you to find this person. Everyone's booked out. I would start looking for someone else. And meanwhile, it might kind of impress your wife and be a fun challenge for you since you know this guy's kind of a quack to just say the next time he brings something up in the session, 
you could say something like, do you mind if you don't talk about your personal life? It makes me kind of uncomfortable. Or, and then your wife will think it's kind of cool and he can, oh, but then he's probably going to stop agreeing with you. He might start agreeing with her because he does seem well, professional. Actually, what you would do if you were not just loving every second of getting your way from this therapist is you would say, it seems like you just agree with me all the time here. And I, I, I'm, that is making me feel a little uncomfortable. I think you need to fire this therapist. Isn't that obvious? No, but then they're in couples fire. therapy. Yeah, therapist. It's, it's, I, but I think, you know, find, start looking for another one and stay in this one because you and your wife can kind of like bond about it and it's working. You know what I mean? So it's like anything's, that's how important therapy is. Anything is better than nothing almost. Are you just talking, just, just putting your mind towards your relationship, just making the commitment to go together and, and blocking it out of your schedule creates your, you know, cre creates more of a bond with your partner. So I think it's important. So, you know, if you just fire him and then it takes you another three months and then something else comes up, you might never start doing it again. So taking it seriously, but ultimately it'll be better for your relationship to get someone who's not like, a whack job well, no the real point i think is that both people in a therapeutic environment should grow right like i you have grown um since we've started going to therapy you have grown um in, in like the way that you're able to deal with difficult situations you have become a, a, a better person and softer person and i have grown in my ability to deal with your shortcomings If you'd like to leave a secret, give us a call, 213-222-8608. I'm going to call this hotline one day and leave a secret about... The billionaire you're fucking for I a boat. can never win an argument with you. Yes, you can. Never. Yes, you can. Never. You can totally win an argument with never. me. Never. Uh, send us an email at endlesshoneymoonpod at gmail if you want to get our advice. Also, we're on Instagram. And my favorite way to listen to podcasts, because you can also watch them too, is on YouTube. And we're there. And make sure to subscribe. We'd like you to be on our Patreon if you want to be a member of our community. We've got a Discord up and running with the honeymooners that are ch chatting. We got we got merch. We got oh, wait, ad free painting. episodes. We got paintings coming your way that our little young daughter has painted and uh, they're they're freaking awesome. You can have an we've original. We've been working on these abstract, we've been working on abstract expressionism. Yep, you can have a child. These aren't done, but they are going to all be framed for our Patreon. We have so many Patreons, I, it's like a factory over here. You can, you can have a child Legero painted painting. Uh, we love you and thank you for listening. And Natasha, as yes. always, I love you. I love you too.